Good morning. And welcome to Winnipeg. Uh, you might say clear and cold Winnipeg, although it's not really clear yet, but we, we are getting to see the sunrise. I didn't notice when it came up. Well, it didn't come up over the berm, but it did come up from behind a bank of clouds, which is kind of like a sunrise. I mean, I'll take anything I can get lately because we haven't had one for about 10 days. Now, what are we going to do today? I was looking at this. I did come back to the model table, but I didn't do anything worth videoing. But I was looking at our, at our plan here, step nine, and I'm trying to put off painting as long as I can, as you, you probably figured that one out. Uh, and I'm thinking that possibly some of these parts that are on step nine and, and maybe also step 10, I, I don't think we get them too mixed up if we were to find them, nip them off and get them ready for paintings. You know, so I do a whole bunch of painting all at once. And the thought that came to me this morning uh, you know, people keep telling me, why don't you paint the parts when, when they're on the sprue? And I know that I, I did do that uh, in the past. I've, I've painted parts while they were on the sprue. But some, some of these pieces, the way the flashings attach to them, they don't really lend themselves too well for that. And uh, you have to, you know, it's, it's really nice if all it, all it is is a little part, like say one of the, the bullards or something like that, uh, or, or a fair lead or something like that, and it's fastened from underneath. And when you nip it off, you're not nipping off any any place where you've already painted. You're going to have to repaint. So that, that those will those would work. I think some of them might be like that, as long as they're not attached from the side. As long as they're attached from underneath. But hey, okay. Uh, now we're going to take a look at. I was going to say remind me to show you, but of course that's not going to work, is it? Remind me to show you. Uh, in uh, Stefan Jambinski's uh, CGI drawing of, of the Iowa, uh, there, there was a period where the Iowa did not have blue decks. Now, I got a comment from somebody, I, uh, I, I think he's in Athens, and he, he was uh, talking about the blue decks. And yes, I realize that it, it, that is more correct, but there, there, there was a time that it had an ordinary deck. And I just can't get my mind around a blue deck. I'm sorry. I just, just, even though it's, even though that's the way it was. <laughs> well, fortunately for me, it, uh, it also was the, what you might say, the normal way. <laughs> now, I can understand why they would go with the blue deck. Because if you were in, in an aircraft, a spotter, a spotter aircraft, and you're flying over at 20,000 feet or whatever you would, you would do, so that the uh, anti-aircraft artillery couldn't hit you, and you're looking down, you're you're going to see a teak deck a lot faster than you're going to see a blue deck, right? So it makes makes sense, you know. It was a good camouflage feature, from what I can see. Now, and I didn't read that or hear that or anything like that. I'm just thinking, in terms of why would they paint it blue? And then, it, oh yeah, camouflage. Um, and speaking of camouflage, I will not be doing a camo job on the side of, of the of the Iowa, even though it, it did have it. And uh, come to think of it, I think right now it's 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 uh, camouflage, isn't it? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, so I'm going to try and remember to show you that. Also, in in today's episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about videoing and what videoing ed editing program I use. And it, it's a little bit lengthy. It got I got a little bit uh, wordy with it, sort of like I am with this opening scene. And so at the beginning of it, I'll put where you can scrub ahead to get to the end, because a lot of you could care less about what video program to use. But I just thought there might be somebody out there that would think, hey, uh, my, my, uh, my uh, cell phone takes pretty good video. Uh, you know, if I could get the files out and put them in a program and have fun manipulating them and do some fades and cut out the stuff that's no good and, uh, you know, uh, well, this program I'm going to talk to you about will do that. And uh, the best part is they have a free version of it that really works and it really is free. 
Uh, but uh, oh, I, I don't think I mentioned this in in the when I'm talking about that program. Why would they put out a free program? Well, it's the idea is you're supposed to really like it, and so you're going to want to get the the paid for version, which will do more. Now, but we'll we'll talk about that uh, later. Okay, uh, maybe today I'll be uh, trying to find some more parts here, and. Uh, I know I did indicate that we have to, you know, you know, we have to paint our deck and we have to paint our hull before we can go in any further. But I'm realizing now that step nine and step ten I don't know. We're we're gonna end up with an awful lot of little parts. I don't know, maybe I should uh Think about spraying here, spraying the deck. Well, we have to we have to spray the deck and the hull. I mean, that all has to be put together. I can't start putting these these parts down uh, unless the deck is mounted in the hull. And the hull, you, I don't want to put the deck in the hull until the hull is painted. So, <laughs> I'm sort of between a rock and a hard place. Okay, if you look up here uh, where the uh, cursor is moving back and forth, you can see I'm on uh, blackmagicdesign.com's website. Now, Blackmagic, they're the people that sell the DaVinci Resolve uh, video editing program. Now, they also have a free version. And the free version, uh, first of all, maybe I should explain... I was uh, on the phone a little while ago with uh, Chris. He's the fellow who uh, gave us those uh, precision files. And uh, he was wondering, what, what video program do I use? So I, I told him, this is what I use. And I was telling him that there's uh, that the DaVinci has a free version. Now, now to get to the free version, you first of all, you have to get on their, on their website up here. And then over here on the right-hand side, you'll see the scroll bar. So I'm going to just sort of drag it down, and you have to you have to go all the way down, almost to the very bottom. Well, that's the very bottom. So we're going to go back up just a little bit here, a little bit here, and uh, here we go. Okay, here's the DaVinci Resolve 18 free. Now the difference between the free version and the studio version is that the studio version it will will render 8k video so I had to upgrade but I was using the free one for a while and it it'll do pretty much everything you want to do every once in a while you'll try to do something and it'll say no it you know we can't do this you have to upgrade but for you know to make really good looking uh, uh, videos you the free version works just fine so uh, yeah and there's no you just click the download and uh, you know uh, there, there's no catch. You, uh, you know, at first I thought there's a catch to it. There's got to be a catch. I, th I think it was, uh, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, one of the viewers by the name of uh, Vic, who I haven't heard from for a long time now, I think he, I think it was him that told me about DaVinci Resolve, and I kind of ignored it, and, and I'm sorry I did, because I wasted a bunch of money on the, the Adobe uh, Premiere Pro. I, uh, that, was, that was a big mistake. It won't, it won't even uh, handle my Nikon 8K video. So, uh, yeah, DaVinci is one of the, I think, one of two outfits that, that will process or, or render the high-end 8K video that my camera is capable of uh, uh, putting out. Anyway, enough technical uh, babble here. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to let you know that uh, you want to up your game a little bit? Well, try this this free download. There's, there, you know, there's there's no catch to it. Uh, the the these guys, uh, Black Magic Design, they also sell cameras. So if you're, uh, you want to get yourself a really good high-end camera, maybe a <laughs> a 12K video camera. I mean, why not? If you got the money, go for it. Uh, <laughs> mind you, YouTube doesn't uh, doesn't uh, accept 12K yet. Anyway. Uh, all right, and enough uh, rambling on and on here. So, uh, yeah, 
Check this out if you want to up your game in video editing. Yeah, you can't lose. You can always uninstall it if you don't like it. Oh, and, and as I was telling Chris, there's a lot of online help. Like if you want to know how to do something, you just uh, bring up Google and click on the microphone and say, how do I whatever in DaVinci Resolve 18? And there's going to be all kinds of people that are only too happy to you know, show how smart they are. And some of them are, are uh, they'll, they'll tell you in, a, in, a, in a, a minute or two how to do a particular thing. And uh, yeah, go for it. Okay, let's uh, get back to the model table. Okay, we are sort of back at the model table. We are in Stefan Drabinsky's uh, CGI drawing here. And you can see that the uh, deck was blue, but in 1947, they changed it to, uh, looks like they changed it to uh, ordinary teak. Now, I don't know if they scraped off the blue paint or if it was, they painted over top of it, or I don't know how they did it. All I know is that uh, it sort of looks, you might say, normal here. <laughs> I don't think blue actually looks normal, but uh, as I mentioned, it's, there's probably a real good reason for it. Anyway, it used to be, at one time, a teak deck. In other words, deck town. Okay. I think I've talked about this before, but I've never really tried to show it to you. But I've got a, a leak in my air hose. And I had tried to wrap it up with tape before and uh, uh, hope hoped that that would work. And it, well, it kind of worked, but not really. But I was looking at it closely just now. And you can you can see right there, just at the end of what I, my makeshift arrow, just where my fingernail is, it almost appears like like there's a piece of metal or something in there. Let's uh, slip the macro lens on and see if we can figure out what that is. Okay, this may or may not work. I'm trying to watch it in the in the monitor here. Now, if we get the light to reflect off that, it, it almost looks like there's a, a piece of metal or something in there. No, I, I don't think that was, I don't think that was in the uh, plastic when it was made, but it, it could have been. But I, I, I've got another idea here. I'll, I'll show you. Okay, so here's our problem, right, right there where my fingernail is. And what I'm thinking is, uh, now I haven't pulled this back yet, so I don't know. Let's see now if you, if I turn it this way, it should have a tendency to loosen the spring, even though it looks like it's going to wind it on. Okay, sure. Let us do this. We'll pull this back like this and, and cut it off and see if we can get this off of here. I think I, I think I probably can. Maybe, uh, uh, we'll use the heat gun. We know we know from past experience that the heat gun gun does wonders, right? And it doesn't want to come. It's it's. I think once we get it off, though, we should we should be able to shove a new s section on, and then we'll just put this back. All right, let's let's just, just try that. Yeah. Uh, where's my heat gun? Okay, now so that this piece isn't going to be so, you might say, unwieldy. We're going to have to uh, cut this anyway, so let's cut it off and then this part will be easier to work with. I don't want to cut myself on camera. There we go. Alright. No. Let's try and get the other piece off, and uh, like I said before, where's my heat gun? Okay, I have already preset the heat gun to 360 degrees Fahrenheit. And I think that should be enough to soften the plastic. Now, I've been wrong about plastic before, it seems. So, uh, we'll just see what happens here. And, uh, here we go. All right. 
right yeah that's a lot softer no question about it I imagine once it cools down it's going to get hard again um, but I'm just going to do the same thing out here on the end and and pull this off I might have to uh, clamp this down a little better so I can pull hard on it um, I'll recompose okay I got the vise clamped onto the table and I can put a pretty good pull on this it, you know, it almost wants to come, at least I think it does. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, heat this whole area here. Now I know I could take my hobby knife, okay. I know I could take the hobby knife and I could, I could, you know, cut, cut along in here like this. But what I don't want to do is, is score the uh, brass fitting and then have it, uh, you know, not be as airtight as it normally would be. Uh, so I want to try this first, and then if this doesn't work, then, uh, uh, well, it doesn't work. And what I'm going to rely on is the fact that the heat is going to transfer from this brass fitting as well along the piece of brass that's on the inside. At least that's the plan. And also we're going to make sure that our hot air doesn't go up into the lens. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, no damage done. Okay, I'm noticing here that we got a, a piece of the plastic hose stuck in the, I don't know what you call it. May as well try and get that out of there. I know I could, uh, I could use my, oh, I don't need to. I was going to say I could use the hobby knife, but we've got it. Okay, so yeah, these are, these are actually, uh, pretty sharp. You can see why that was hard to pull off. And you can also see why it, it cut the, uh, you know, it cut the hose. That feels quite sharp. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to be squeezing on it and twisting now, do I? Okay, let's see if we can force this onto the uh, good end. could be that I'm going to have to maybe heat this up just a little bit so it'll go on easier. Don't want to heat it up too much because it could be that with when this plastic is heated it loses it becomes maybe brittle or something like that. And uh, I wouldn't want this to all of a sudden pop off when it was under pressure. Now mind you, downstairs in my workshop I, there's a there's also a regulator and I set it to about 70 to 80 pounds I don't have it at the full 135 pounds or whatever the tank is so it's almost going I'm just going to warm this up just a little bit and do it off camera Okay, it's still a little bit warm. I think once that cools down, the plastic is going to get a little bit harder. I don't think that's going to come off. The uh, at eighty, at seventy to eighty pounds, the amount of pull on that I'm guessing might only be about oh five pounds because the area that it's you know of the of the inside diameter of this hose is very small. So that eighty pounds that would be if it was a you know a, a, a the area of a of a square inch. So uh, this is probably just a small fraction of that. So I, I know what I'm trying to say, but I sometimes don't. Okay, if I turn it this way, it'll sort of lock it in. Yeah, it should be good. I'm, I'm gonna quit fooling around with it now. Okay, now just for the fun of it, let's uh, cut that open and see if we can find out what that is. It looks like a piece of, well, I was gonna say photo etch, but it can't be. Okay, this piece, it goes from right here to right here. Now, there is the possibility 
that there is nothing in there and the crack is refracting the light so let's let's just take it off right here now I wasn't expecting this uh, hobby knife to cut that good that's kind of scary okay no no wonder that uh, okay now now we'll take it off right here on the other side Okay. Now the idea will be to try and split this thing right where the where that piece is. Where where is it? I, I, I lost it. Oh, there it is. Now this this might just simply be a crack. Maybe I'll I'll re recompose here and we'll get right in with the mac macro lens. Okay, I want to try not to move this out of your field of view here. Uh, I'm doing this backwards. <laughs> I'm doing it away from me and towards you. But you can see the crack here, so I'm going to try and put the blade right in the crack. And just split it open there. Now, is there anything in there? Well, let's take a little slice out one side. And just remove it here. I'm not really seeing this. Let's take a little slice off the other side of the crack. Whoops. Oh, there's, there appears to be. I'm seeing something there, but it's not. It's not metal. No, it's that's not metal. I guess I guess what was happening was there was some sort of a, a crack and the light was refracting off of the crack. Um okay, uh, I think we've uh, beat this to death, haven't we? Why can't I get that out of there? There we go. Okay, whatever it was, it, it should be on on this piece right here. But but there's nothing there. It just it just looked like a piece of metal. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? Now I was just realizing fixing that was r really stupid because uh, now I've got no excuse. Before I used to be able to say, well, I. I can't airbrush, I've got a leak in my hose. And, uh, I can't say that now. Okay, we're good to go. Well, do we paint or do we look for parts? Well, I can't paint anyway. I gotta clean up my model table. Thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well. We'll be seeing you tomorrow.